So to make a quill pen, you need a quill. To get a quill, you need a feather. The quill is the central part of the feather, specifically the hollow part without barbs. The best feathers for quills come from geese, although a turkey feather will work just fine. And there are a lot more turkey hunters now than there are goose hunters, sadly. Uh, to get the feathers, if you don't hunt, then you should learn. But if you're stuck, if you're in an urban area, um, you can look for green spaces, golf courses, open spaces where geese congregate. And in the warm weather when they're molting, you can probably find some drop feathers. While you're looking, instead of complaining about all the goose shit everywhere, you can give some thought to why we have so many geese today, whereas 75 years ago they were almost extinct. You need large-ish large -ish feather to make a good quill. On a bird's wing, a goose or a turkey, the outermost feathers, feathers, the outermost feathers are flight feathers. Those are the ones you want. The first feather is the pinion feather. That's usually too thick, uh, too heavy in the quill to be easy to cut. But the second through fourth, fifth feathers, those are perfect. Goose feathers are better than turkey feathers because they're straight. Well, straighter, more comfortable to hold. Uh, they have thinner walls, so they're easier to cut. And they have less internal membrane to clean out for ink flow. To cut a good quill, you'll need a good feather, a small, very sharp knife, and some ultra-fine steel wool. If the feather's fresh, you'll need to cure it before it'll be stiff enough to cut or write well. You can leave it on the windowsill for a week or two, or you can stick it in hot sand for 10 minutes. This is a nice goose feather. Look at the shape. This is the one you want. We'll end up writing with the quill part of the feather. That's the hollow base of the shaft. There's this very fine membrane on the outside of the quill. It'll hold on to ink and keep the quill from writing properly unless we scrape it completely off. So we'll take a little steel wool and scrub the membrane off until it's perfectly smooth. In popular culture, we think of a quill pen as a great big feather, but historically you generally clean off the barbs. That's the soft feathery parts. You generally clean them right off. This makes it much more comfortable to write with. So take your pen knife, yes, that's where the term comes from, and trim the shaft to your liking. You can leave a little tuft at the end. It looks good and comes in useful for dusting the page off. Now you can see how the shape of the feather matters. You want left wing feathers if you're a right-handed person and vice versa, just like you're building arrows. Look how the feather curves back over the hand and how the quill's oval rather than perfectly round. This upper surface we will call the front and the lower is the back. The first cut is made from the back. The exact angle is a matter of taste, but try around 60 degrees. Then do the same from the front so the two angles match. If you've got a turkey feather instead of a goose feather, you'll find a lot of loose membrane inside the shaft. So try and fish this out or carefully push it up into the cavity. Careful not to split the feather. Because now we're going to split the feather intentionally, splitting the nib. This is very important to do correctly, but it's hard to screw up. The split is what will carry ink to the paper and allow the pen to write. Make a very small nick on the inside of the shaft. Place your thumbnail at the point where you want the split to stop, say 3 eighths of an inch back. Put the end of another quill in the shaft and gently pull up. And that's it. Use a pencil or something if you've only got one feather. Now we cut away the back of the nib. This clears the page when we're writing, and then the sides of the quill to make a point. The longer the point, the more flexible the nib will be. So try to make each side perfectly even. The final cut is to set the nib. This is an angled cut from the top of the shaft, leaving just the tiniest flexible edge at the front of the quill. 
The tip of the pen is actually flat instead of a sharp point. The width of this tip determines how thick a line you draw. You can back up the quill against your thumbnail or against the edge of the table. And that's it. Writing with a quill is very different than the pens you're probably used to. You hardly touch the page, it's more like painting. Learn patience. Learn focus.